Hey guys, Levi from The Rag Company. We are in Gilderland, New York, and we're one of my favorite companies. Uh, and we thought, since we're in the area, we're here on our East Coast adventure, why not stop in at our friends, Pure Adapt Detailed Image. So let's go inside. Let's meet Greg, Mike, and the gang, and uh, let's check out how they do what they do. So. Gotta knock on the door. They keep this door locked. Hey, Welcome, guys. What are you doing? Welcome, buddy. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Yes. So this is a... Uh, yes, welcome. Front home, part. Home, home of Detailed <laughs> Images, our offices. Here's some of our guys. Everyone's working hard, as always. Nice. And uh, yeah, this is where we make uh, everything happen here. Come so this is like your main... The, you guys are the core, mm -hmm. like customer service, mm -hmm. orders, everything, uh, yep. buying, shipping, all that stuff. Yep. We do all our own website stuff, too. It's all done in-house, so... Everything, all the shipping, software, everything basically is done more or less by us here too. So everyone in this room basically makes that happen. So nice. it's just a small team of us. Well, it's, it's nice you all get to hang out together. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we do. We, we, we do lunches. We, we, we obviously enjoy each other's company. That's good. Uh, you have to in that kind of space. So come on, we'll take a quick look at our conference okay. room. What are you guys, why are you, what, why are you just sitting there? Oh, sorry, I didn't know uh, what's going, are you guys doing the tour now? Dang it, okay, sorry. Um, you guys go ahead, we'll, we'll be right behind you. Sorry, sorry. This is huge. This is nice. Yeah, thank you, buddy. We just did a little expansion here, and uh, it's been a big help to keep getting us uh, our shipments out fast and uh, efficiently. Yeah. So, so is this this is receiving. This is where the dock loading dock. Yep. We we'll get packages okay. in there. We've got our nice little break room here, dedicated for our employees. Keeps everybody happy. Gives them some downtime where they can watch, you know, whatever they like. Nice. And then we have a. This space has not been developed yet. We're gonna have a nice little receiving area. Basically, yeah. everything comes in here is checked manually. And, uh, you know, we, we really, there's lots of issues basically when incoming shipments, you have to really inspect them carefully for any kind of damages, right. shortages, et cetera. Just making sure that basically you got what you paid for and that we can give this on to the customer and it's what they're looking for as well. So, yeah. you know, so we take a lot of So stuff. it'll be prettier. Yes, yeah, so basically, yes. Yeah, so it'll be more expensive <laughs> and more tables. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Take a tour with us here. So this is cool. I like that you've got all the parts, uh, you got all the products out and mm -hmm. available to see. Mm -hmm. Like I said, at the rag company, mm -hmm. we just have big boxes of towels yep. and mm -hmm. uh, we just read what the box says. Mm -hmm. So we don't ever get to actually have like this display. Mm -hmm. And this is actually really cool. Yeah. We're a just in time inventory system. So you're gonna see us be a little leaner here with more frequent shipments. And we're also a first in first out. So basically everything here, you basically see someone sign for it and they also put a date on there as well. So okay. it's basically when we got that item in. And then basically that's how we know how to stock it and make sure that we're getting, you know, the oldest product out as fast as possible. Okay. So basically everything you're getting from us, everything from us, we're hoping you're getting it within a couple months of when it was basically created. That's the, that's the goal basically. Yeah. So we're constantly working on that. And uh, yeah, so nice. let's keep going on. So you, s this looks too perfect. Yes, <laughs> we did a laser level. Okay. The, the, and a little human eye. And a little, you know, we basically did our best. It's not quite perfect, but we got it pretty darn close. And you said you've measured out like your spacing, everything yep. in between is, is... Basically almost every aisle with the exception of one, which I'm not gonna tell you about or why, but every aisle basically is completely equally spaced. Both the overstock section is a little bit bigger and our pulling aisles basically are all standard distances, basically for safety reasons. So we always know how many carts we can get down there. Employees basically just, you know, everything feels very routine. Um, for them, it's just safe. Um, yeah. it, it's, you don't think you'll ever have an accident, but you never know. So we're just trying to keep it wide enough that they can pull effectively, you know, without any safety issues. This is rad. So, so we've got about 70 different brands, 70 plus different brands. I think about 18 plus 100 products that are here. Um, obviously Jeez. from all over the world, from, you know, Korea, Singapore, the UK, Germany, obviously the good old US of A, we got a lot of stuff there too, but basically we will scour the globe. Wherever we have to go to bring something in, we'll do it. Luckily yeah. the last five, 10 years, things have gotten a little bit easier to import things and they're bringing USA reps for that too, but we've literally scoured the globe to bring in whatever we can, you know, whatever we think is the best, you know, we have to, for Flex and Dodo Juice brands, we brought in almost, you know, 13, 14 years ago, you know, that was a challenge back yeah, in the day. Yeah. Um, and we were proud to be one of the first to bring them over here too. But like I said, it's getting a little bit easier with the internet and everyone kind of shipping has evolved so much as well with it. So that's cool. So, yeah, so keep going along here. This is rad. You see our team hard at work here, pulling orders, getting them ready to go out. Yeah, this is Basically awesome. anything you order by 1 p.m. 
you're gonna have shipped out Eastern time, you're gonna have shipped out basically the same day. So basically always having that dependability that if you, if you order with us by 1 p.m., it's going out the same day with virtually no exceptions really too. So we want people to know they can count on us at any time to order and they're gonna get what they asked for in good shape um, when we said we were gonna deliver too. So That's cool. we, we, we do our best. There's certainly you know delivery issues, but we're yeah. working really hard at minimizing them. And is there like a, is it like, are you just putting stuff on the shelves to store it? Or is there like an actual like process around like where the products, each product goes? Like, What's the method to your madness? Yeah. Basically it's mostly by distributor. Okay. And then we also do a little bit by popularity, the physical size of the product. Okay. And basically keeping those products that were moving the quickest um, and more towards the front, basically. Okay. So basically keeping the least amount of steps for our warehouse team, basically so they're basically pulling orders as fast as possible. And ultimately it just comes down to reducing our costs so our customers don't have to absorb that cost. So that's, everything yeah. is about dropping that cost down, getting the product out to people as fast as possible. Um, and like I said, by, by one o'clock today, uh, we will have every order pulled no matter how many come in basically and at the same time we'll have a pickup here by 2 30 3 o'clock potentially our first pickups could come so you basically we have to be ready at 2 30 to get out every order yeah. placed and you know on a day like monday where you're packing friday saturday sunday and monday morning orders you better be uh hauling to get that yeah. done basically in time you're not going to be able just to do that you know with a with no system in place too so this has all just been an evolution over time but um you know we're really proud of it and we try to really try to minimize the step of every person here um, to get the orders out as fast as possible and keep the cost down, like I That's said. That's awesome. Yeah. Holy cow. So yeah. how do you, how, so you got, okay, now here's like tools. Yep. Like you've got sprayers, mm -hmm. brushes, mm -hmm. pads. This is rad. Yeah. Yep. Basically, and like I said, this is, these are lighter things and they will tend to go towards a USPS, which kind of stays over in this general direction. Okay. So that's why they tend to be more strategically put over here. And some of the heavier items or some of the items that have shipping restrictions tend to ship via FedEx. So that's why some of those items skew that direction too. Oh, so okay. so as much as I'm not a numbers person, you're I've, a numbers had, person. <laughs> I've, I've had to become one whether I like it or not. And the numbers really always prove themselves out and we yeah. really we record the step to each unit so we know how far you have to walk to each unit. And basically we can calculate how often you're doing that and then strategically move products in certain directions to achieve the least amount of steps possible. Again, same effort, reducing cost. That's ultimately yeah. the goal. Well, there, and, too. and for normal detailers, one thing you guys need to look for is how many steps does it take you to go around a vehicle? Mm -hmm. And you've heard tons of people tell you, get, get a cart, mm -hmm. get totes, bring mm -hmm. certain things with you so that you don't have to keep going back over to a thing, get a detailer's helper belt, which yes. you guys carry. Yes, we do. Uh, one of the things just to, it, it's gonna make the time you put into your job mm -hmm. much better because it's gonna save you hours. Yeah. And in this case, it's saving not oh. only your employees, the number of steps they have to walk mm -hmm. every day because if these guys had to go all the way to the back exactly. and grab something exactly. every time, they're like, ah, yes. gotta get that. Yep. So. And, and that does happen because we'll add new brands and it goes maybe to the back somewhere. And if that becomes a very popular brand, like when we added the rag company, yeah. uh, you know, basically that has to get adjusted at some point. And yeah. then, you know, some of an art of when you do that and, you know, because things are going to change and evolve and you have sales and, you know, when, when you make that decision of, okay, this is selling really well, we have to figure out a way to get it closer to the front to save steps. So, you know, that's just part of what I said, we ha you have to live in the numbers and we certainly do and uh, make sure we get those things to the front. And again, it's all about lowering your overhead cost. And basically this is actually a skill I developed when I was a detailer. I was obsessed with my process of what order I do things in, how long each process took me, yep. and I'm constantly tweaking it. I would even sometimes do a split test where I would say, I'm gonna do it this way today. The next day I would try to find, if I had a similar car, I would do it a different way. And I would try to just analyze, okay, wh what was better? What had the better result? What took more time? Yep. And basically that same skill set then directly applied towards this. So, yeah, uh, that's what I did. I, I did a lot of dealership cars, so I would get the same car all of a sudden yeah. in a row. And it that's was, great. we'd start figuring out what was the fastest, easiest way. Mm -hmm because if you could get them knocked out quick, that's where your money was at. Yeah. And so yeah. this is just that same, it's a grand scale. Yeah, and it's, it's something that it's a life scale too on some yeah. level that you're gonna have to try to figure out what takes you the most time. How do you save time? How do you still keep your quality at a certain level without having any sacrifice? And by the way, we're always doing quality checks here too. Our goal is to have error rate should be below half a percent. So that's, oh, dam wow. that's damages, yeah. mistakes, anything like that should always be below half a percent. So we tally up 
Well, again, remember uh, before I was telling you about our customer service, how carefully we track things. We tally up every error, every damaged shipment, basically. And again, that, that should always be over under a half percent. If it goes above that, then we usually start having conversations. We start to, trying to figure out, is it a particular product that it's associated with? Maybe it's a bottling issue. Yeah. Um, is there maybe new employees that we need to some more training with? So we, we're going to attack it from every angle. But again, you got to live in the numbers. That's just the way yeah. the world is going. And that data is there for you if you know how to curate it um, and apply it to what you're doing. So that's been really helpful for us. So do you guys have like a program then that also like, let's say I order, does that translate to this map basically that you've created? Yes, basically every, every invoice that comes in will basically then be translated into a different invoice um, that we actually pull from here. And it basically is going to strategically take you up an aisle and down an aisle in a chronological order. Basically our puller should never be moving in a backwards direction unless we have a, an error or mistake somewhere. So basically again, just keeping the flow. Also for traffic reasons, if you have yeah. a dozen employees out here walking around, they're not going back and forth across each other. They're always all flowing in the same direction yeah. basically. And uh, yeah, basically we, we've, we know the steps that every single order takes. We know how many steps it takes to do each one of those things. And, uh, you know, someone might pull an order that has, you know, maybe 80 steps. Another person yeah. pulls one that's going to be 450 because it's, right. they got to get, all, you know, 40 items. So uh, it, it, sometimes you, you don't get the lucky well, straw over yeah, there. Yeah, it's like getting a clean car and a dirty car. Exactly. exactly. You know, you same it's luck of the draw. Yep. You don't know you if don't, it's going to be. When if, you open that back seat and then you figure out that, oh, they have kids. And they're, you know, yes. they've made a mess here too. So it's a similar, again, all the same things I learned while detailing and doing this, they've all gone hand in hand. And, uh, Ultimately, it just relates to just us growing this thing and making it bigger and better for our customers. That's cool. Yeah. And we'll slide over here now. You're going to see our boxes. Again, this goes back to you want to have your shipment, again, by 1 p.m. if you order, you're getting it the same day. So basically, our boxes are then pre-made more or less. So yeah. our team can move at a lightning speed, basically getting everybody ready. Now, you have to have the square footage for this. It's not, it's not always going to work. A lot of people will tell you that's not a good business model. Yeah, I totally we, don't, understand. we don't have our boxes yeah. at the Rag Company, in case you guys are wondering. Mm -hmm. We don't have ours pre-built. Yep. So we do have to build that, and that is the time that we yep. have to put into it. But this is yeah. phenomenal because you've got the space yeah, these to are, do this. And these are basically made you know, a day or two early because they're not sitting here for any long period of time. But yeah. yeah, we will go through all of these on a Monday. They will all be gone. Uh, so we have to remake them. But again, that's how, how we can move at a certain speed is having them pre-made. And uh, the other thing is we always have them upside down or on their side, basically. So there shouldn't be any dust in them, too. We always try okay. to yeah. take there. And also, if you notice, if you take a quick look at them, the exterior dimension is always displayed. Visible. So basically, again, so if someone's first day here, they know exactly what to pull and uh, where they're going to find it. Yeah. All of them are labeled as well down here. And the boxes are all in somewhat of a chronological order based on smallest dimension. So you kind of start with some of the smaller ones. They work as the bigger ones for the most part. Um, so it's all little efficiencies we've yeah. gained over the years that basically just kind of keep us on par. And I would say you're always competing against an Amazon of the world yeah. who has, you know, unbelievable efficiencies. Um, but you have to do what you can to combat that. And this is also just, you know, from years and years of doing these things, taking tours of other people's facilities. We've been to FedEx's facility. They built a brand new state-of-the-art facility up here not that long ago. That was an amazing tour where we got enlightened about how they process things, what we can do better. We've had FedEx engineers come in here and talk to us about packing materials, how to tape better, all those things we've yeah. taken into account. We've taken some of their online classes. We've done other, uh, you know, done other YouTube videos. We've seen of other people's packing operations and, you know, just try to learn from them and say, what can we apply to this? So right. a lot of time and effort goes into, believe what your package is, how it's done. A lot of training with our new employees, believe it or not, we spend a lot of time on box making and things like that. Things you think maybe we just gloss over, like, yeah, use a tape gun and start making a box. We don't do that. Actually, that's like a whole, like a couple hours of it. And we have one of our senior guys kind of watch over you and they're gonna say whether this looks good or not. Yeah. And if you even look, I mean, you can just see like, you know, the, our guys, you know, these are relatively straight 90 degree angles. Yeah, no, and, they're straight you know, and they're like, nice. Our guys just care about it. And that's why I said, we, we're lucky. We have a great team who understands that concept and what it takes to execute that. And they're doing it on a day-to-day -day basis. And, this would be an easy thing to kind of cut a quarter on, just be really sloppy and just, or have a machine do it that maybe does an okay job. But these guys do a great job. And I think it's one of those, the amazing things that helps us compete and just have a great presentation and ultimately get products to you safely and efficiently. That's what you're that's gonna hear cool. me say over and over and over again, because that's worth thinking about it every day. Well, you were also saying like, so, so we walk through an order. So like the order sheet comes out, it's been translated to your mm -hmm. system. Yep. Uh, that includes the box. Mm -hmm. It tells you what box to pull. Yep. of the products that they're going to put in. Yep. And basically, so, we have every single product is measured. So we know the dimension of every single product. We put in a little algorithm. It then calculates the approximate cubic square footage of it and what box it's going to go into. It's not a perfect system, but it gets a very high percentage of them in there. It's amazing. Amazing actually. that you do, do yeah, all and, that. And also, we have, like, I, I think we have, you know, maybe 
40, 50 different boxes here too. So we don't want our employees, especially new guys, who's trying to figure out what box they should be using. Right, yeah. We have a system that can basically get it right for you. You know, probably 95 plus percent of the time, it can pick the perfect box each time. So when you get up to the front, it's already in the right box and we're ready to ship it out. That's so cool. Um, it also notifies you if it has any uh, shipping limitations on it, if it has um, any hazardous materials or anything like that, if it's aerosol, it's all right there in the invoice. So you know what stickers to put onto it. Again, so it ships properly, safely, and gets to you without any delays, basically. So we've got a lot going on on our invoices. They might seem like a simple thing, but there's actually a lot of little things on there that basically help our team pull said quickly and efficiently. This is rad. This is yeah. so cool. So if, uh, so what are your next kind of plans for the business? Like if you're, because mm -hmm. you still have some extra space. Yep, we're just moving. We, we, yeah, you we're literally just, quickly. yeah, you had did do this whole big expansion. Yes, yep. Um, but so what are some of your other, are you planning on doing like We got more? a couple new brands in the works. We're, okay. we're looking at some things here. We're doing some testing. Um, as you know, that's a process. It takes a long yeah. time. Um, even, even when we do make a decision that we like a brand, it can still take a month or two easily just to actually work out the terms of it, make sure everyone's on the same page. I work really hard at making sure that we understand the business that we're getting into, the, that company, how they like to do business. Yeah. I try to make sure we understand that fully from day one. Cause you just, you've learned over the years of, uh, you know, maybe miscommunication, things like that. You can avoid them by just getting on the same page from day one. And it just takes time actually too. you know, to put together a large order. It might take them a couple weeks, another week or two for shipping. Right. We need to get it in. We need to photograph, we need descriptions. We need all the things that we do. You know, we have labels that are uploaded. Uh, directions, if there's assembly things, you know, we, we're going to upload all that. So we try to get all that going. So, you know, even from the time we make a decision to move forward with a new company, that's going to take some time. So I think you're going to see a several new brands from us, especially now that we have our new space, we can do that. We just added IGL. They just got here too. That's been a nice ad for us and uh, lots more like that. I think there's some efficiencies we can do. Um, we're not totally done with our new space. Um, so I think that we're going to hopefully have more space for our employees, have a better break room at some point. So lots of cool things will be in the works yeah. for us. And you said you guys have been in this building for how long? Uh, I believe it's coming up on 12 years. So wow. yeah, we've been just slowly growing, knocking down walls where we can. <laughs> <laughs> we're lucky, we, we're lucky we have that option. Yeah, that, that makes a big difference because it gives you that ability to grow, mm -hmm. um, you know, at your pace, mm -hmm. which helps. Yeah, so. and, it's, and it's hard because we said, you know, depending on when your lease is up, that doesn't always align with getting new space. Yeah. And so you're gonna have to make a decision whether you wanna knock down walls, stay where you are, or you wanna move. And that's always a difficult decision. And, uh, you know, we sign a lease for maybe three or five years and you're thinking that's so far off in the future, but then all of a sudden you realize you have to, usually we have to re-sign within six months of it expiring. Yeah. So really you're making the decision at least a year, if not 18 months at a minimum, you have to be making that decision. So unfortunately you never really get to stop thinking about your lease for very long, except for like right as you sign it, basically, yeah. you can think about it. But then if you have a lot of growth, you think, okay, can I knock down a wall? Can yeah. I expand? So exactly. we've, we've had to think about it a little more than I thought we'd have to, but you know, good problems to have and yeah. we're, we're fortunate in many levels. No, this is, so, this is nice. And if you look here, we Lit. got basically all of our signage here, basically telling us where to go. Basically, this is where the employees pull in. Unit yep. 10, aisle two. Yep. We have middle entries. Our invoices tell an employee whether he should enter from the middle or if it's faster to go around the yeah. back. Again, because we have all the distance yeah. and all those things too. So just little things here, especially when you're new. Yeah. You know, we just don't want employees freestyling and kind of doing what they think is best. You know, we have math. And then over time, it becomes second nature for the employees. They yeah, don't need to look at it as memory. much. But uh, unfortunately, some of our guys here, they're uh, having to adjust with the uh, new layout. So when they knew where things were, now they're having to rely on it again, which is good because it tests our system. If we have yeah. any mistakes or any issues we want to improve upon, hopefully they're identifying it. And also, they're a great team. Like, they, they're they right on it. Hey, this is this is not right. We can we can improve here. So we have to listen to that feedback, and they're really good at providing it. And for them, we do our best to incorporate it where we can, and it's really helped us to stay on top of it. So That's awesome. Yeah. This is so rad. Like. Yeah. So let's just say 10 years, 15 years in the future, yes. you can put in robots. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> technically you've already coded everything. Yeah, yeah, we're so already they could there. literally they could literally do this. The hard but, part is in our industry and you know, even with tiles yeah. and everything too, is not everything's barcoded. Exactly. That's everyone always says, why don't you get things that do bar and it's just like Yes, but half our manufacturers don't use barcodes. So right. you're gonna to have to contend with that. And that's actually one of the things that it makes a, a, 
relatively challenging. When you add that, you add hazardous materials, and you add in materials that expire relatively quickly. Obviously, nothing like the food industry, but you know things like coatings. You you have to get that out of your store in a couple months. You cannot yeah. hold on to that for a year plus kind of thing. Yeah. So if you add all those challenges in there, it's it's not it, they're, they're not they're not minor barrier entry. And then let's throw in a, a little competitor called Amazon. Right. You know Walmart, the all the auto parts stores of the world too. I was like, it's it's a challenging business to be in. You're gonna have to survive on very slim margins. There's nobody. There's no easy way around that. And that's yeah. why you. I think that's why you see us scratching and clawing so tightly for every bit we can to save customers because you have to. Yeah. If not, if you're giving away percentages here and there and there and there, it's gonna be very difficult for you to compete. And so. you well. And it, and it's one of those things. Like it's a it's a business and it's your baby. Yes. And you guys started this out of your parents' yes, basement. Yes. Basement. Yes. Yep. So this so, is. Like, it's hard. It's hard to give it away. It's hard to put it in the hands of your employees. It's hard to let a brand go that you've had for over a decade that was in my parents' basement. You know, yeah. it's hard to let them go sometimes. But at the same instance, you have to make good business decisions, and that's not always convenient. And that's that's not something I enjoy doing. Yeah. Um, but it's a part of the business, and either you accept that and you adjust with it, or you're going to have a difficult time being successful. So again, use the numbers. Yeah. Use, there's, there's metrics you can use for almost any industry and detailers have them too. Um, I, when I detailed, I always timed my details. Yep. Every detail I did, I timed it. And then you check back on what you did, what was good, what was bad. Why was this not as profitable as other details? And also every detail I do, at the end of it, you start looking back and say, was that even profitable? We did so many details that weren't even profitable. We were, yeah. just, yep. we were just young and naive and just didn't know how to charge what we were worth. Now, hopefully there's more resources. You can compare your website to somebody else's. You can kind of see what's being charged in your area and other areas. So hopefully you can yeah. do that better than we did in the beginning. But certainly we're all lessons you just learn over time and uh, those help you know, the detailing business and it also obviously help when we transition to well, being and, just and, a product business. Like, and and I, I think a lot of detailers seem to forget that, that at the end of the day, it's still a business. Yep. You know, so many of us wanna, you know, maybe we didn't go to college, maybe we didn't mm-hmm. finish mm-hmm. You know, high school but it was, it, it's something that we all find a passion in. It's mm-hmm. something we all want to do. Mm-hmm. But the bottom line is like you're saying, you got to have those numbers because you got to make money at the end of the day. And I was the same way. I, I counted my cars, I counted, I timed yeah. it up, I timed my steps. And I know many of you watching listen are still wondering how I was able to achieve a one step polish in under 20 minutes, but it's doable. Uh, yeah. But it, it's, it's finding those things. Yeah. It's, one, it's fun. I think it's great for business to yeah. learn that stuff because yeah. it's like a treasure hunt for yourself. Yeah, yeah. You and, know? and also it and benefits you. Solving. Yeah, and I, you were exactly right. I mean, I grew up with the posters on my wall as a kid. I do this because I ultimately love cars and I love business and I love helping other people's business by getting them products in a quick way. But it's a business, and you know. What yeah. I, mean? I said, oh, "Oh, my dream job is I gave it all away." That yeah. would be the best case scenario. Is I would just give everything away all the time, and I would be that would be the best job ever for me. I would make me so happy. However, that's not reality. It's not going to pay the mortgage. It, no, exactly. It's not going to pay and these take, guys. Yeah, They've and, all got families. Yeah, exactly. When you have you know quite a few employees now, we've we've developed. And you know, I take getting them their paycheck. I take very seriously, and I I take it serious that I'm giving to them for not only this week. I'm talking about for years. I want to be able yeah. to share that this could be a home for them that they can buy you know a house, buy a house on. Buy and cars, it's like yeah, when you start realizing someone's school. Putting their mortgage, you know, on your what you're doing as a business, yeah. You you realize you have to make good business decisions. It's not even just about you anymore. It's about other people, and that that helps you kind of make those those yeah. difficult decisions to drop this brand and maybe add this one, and you know, having to make changes that basically you know maybe are you know maybe not what you always want to do, but it's what you have to do to stick better. And like I would say, you got that looming competitor of an Amazon out there who, believe me, they're they are very good at what they do, and you better be you innovating better adapt. To, yeah. to keep up. So that's well, that's what we're going to keep trying to do here. So. Your name is Pure Adapt. Exactly, so, exactly. That's I our mean, incorporated name. So <laughs> for that, for, partly for that reason. Yeah. So this is this is just phenomenal. Like yeah. I thank you so much for letting yeah, us absolutely. come and wander through. Yeah. Uh, and hang out and spend the day with you guys. Like this has been so yeah. fun. We got and one. So, we got one more thing too. We're gonna so eye opening. Yeah. To see. Yeah, so. and people think you know opening up a store. I need to throw up a website. I'm like, it, there's so much that goes into managing the products, the labels changing, yeah, the codes changing. Um, the hazardous material thing is getting really big now too. You got to be very careful with what you ship and how you ship it. There's a lot more regulation. They're tightening up on that. So you know you can't just throw a bottle of uh, super degreaser in and ship it via postal. You know like they're, you're yeah. not supposed to do some of those types of things anymore too. So you know a lot of those things that are really cha- challenging and you better keep uh, evolving and adapting there too. So it always sounds easy and glamorous maybe from afar. You know especially when you're detailing, maybe it always seems easier to be the supplier. Yeah. If you're a supplier, it always seems easier to be the manufacturer. You know if you're the manufacturer, then you wish you know you're the 
guy who did the raw materials. You know, so it always it seems easier yeah, there's going There's always up. a ladder. Yeah, exactly. Like and, and, and it usually circles back around to it's like, man, I just wish I was the detailer. It, it would be easier. Like, yeah. So, yeah. It, you know, it cycles around. And, uh, you know, we, every business you get into is going to have issues. You're all yep. going to have competitors. Um, embrace it. Don't don't run away from it. Don't be afraid of it. Um, you know, we're, we're friendly with almost all of our competitors. We all try to learn from each other on some level. We try to understand what each other are going through. And, um, you know, while they are competitors, I, it's not an unfriendly competition. And I always encourage detailers to have that same viewpoint. And I think a lot of them are doing it. Groups like the IDA and, you know, meetups at SEMA and things like that and all these car shows. I think that's a great, you know, example of like, you know, hey, go there and, and learn. Like, yeah. listen to what yeah. other people are saying and try to take something away. And I'm amazed I can go to those things, go for five hours, and I just learn one nugget. And I'm like, that is going to help our business tremendously. And it's like, because you, you shut up and you started listening. Yeah. Once, you know, so yeah. that's what we try to keep doing. And uh, I'm amazed how much we can learn when you do that. And I'm now I'm to the point where I'm more progress or, or proactively even seeking it out, too. I want to go to the FedEx facility and take a tour. I want to go talk to detailers in our area and say, what, what are they going through? What are their pressure points to? So just kind of learn those types of yeah. things, taking that serious, taking their feedback, figuring out is there a way I can realistically apply that to our business and improve things for them. And uh, that's just what we do on a daily basis. And I'm lucky I've been doing this 15 years. I'm still motivated every day when I get up. I'm very lucky. I basically, I love what I do. There's challenges. There's days you don't love it. But I mean, ultimately, I just, I love getting up and doing this business. And um, I think I'll be doing it for a long time, hopefully. That's awesome. So, I got one more thing I'm going to show okay. you on the tour. Let's go. We come down here in our favorite aisle. And for, for all of our guys here, I won't pick out that size for you. But <laughs> <laughs> for, for all of our guys here, we got to. We gotta hook them up with the, oh, know, the, nice. the the detailer shirt. So I want everyone for the rag company. You guys come pick out whatever you want. You Excellent. want a hoodie? Appreciate uh, it. You know anything like that? By the way, this was born. You can't quite fully read it, but it's our detailer shirt. This was just born out of just repping that you were a detailer. It's yep. not really brand specific. It's not meant to be a, a particularly a detailed image related thing. Yep. It's just meant to be someone out there just rep that you're a detailer that you're loving it, and uh, that's what these men for. So any any of you guys want hoodies, awesome. Awesome. backpacks, whatever, that's for the, the team. We want you guys to take some home Thank and just you. Uh, rep being proud of being a detailer because we should be for sure so yeah this is one of my favorite this yeah. this is one of my favorite items that you guys did yes uh, yeah. my guys at, at my shop would get them and they were very excited about having yep. that stuff this is so. my other favorite thing huh? boom i love my detailer bag this one actually does have the detailed image on there but <laughs> like i said it's not really meant to be about detailed image it's meant to be just about repping that you're a detailer yeah. so um, that's one of our favorite things we picked up uh, my business partner mike came up with that idea and it was just one of those things we were like so obvious like the well, word detailer like just yeah. brand that just put that out there people should be proud of it well um, and i love what it's done in social media and i love seeing guys from mm -hmm. all over yep. the country wearing that shirt and yep. and being proud to be a detailer yeah and, like, and, and what we found know. out some places are making it kind of like their shop shirt too like yeah they don't want to have to do a custom collared shirt every time for their yep. new guys they don't know if this guy's gonna stay a week a month a year kind of thing too so it's a great way just to kind of put it on it looks semi-professional it's a nice especially this one i like the dark gray because it doesn't show all the splatter from yeah. if yeah. you're polishing and things like that too so it kind of lasts they're under armor too so it's actually you know gonna last more than three yeah. washes yeah. and it'll still look good too so one nice. of the things we did, and I, I really enjoy it, and I, I hope it helps in some capacity, you know, where people just, again, rep that you're proud that you're a detailer. And yeah. ne never, never shy away from it. I, I always mean, guys say like you and me, we've been in it for so long, yeah. and we remember when it was, you know, we're s s scrounging, basically. Yeah, people, people would ask, and we're like, oh, we're, we're detailers. Like, I detail they don't, cars. They didn't even know what that meant yeah. at one point, too. And I said, I, 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 I didn't like the way I kind of almost timidly said I was a detailer. Yes. I resent that I used to speak that way. Yeah, me too. Whereas now, I'm like, no, I'm a detailer. I'm very proud of what I do. And uh, I said, I think it, it shows when you go to a show like SEMA now, when there's just whatever, 50 booths now that are related to yeah. detailing, as opposed to maybe there was five, you know, a decade plus ago. Um, I think it speaks to our industry that it is growing and we all should be proud of what it's accomplished cumulatively, especially with groups like the IDA and yep. some of the, you, know, you guys doing so much media and just everyone just contributing towards it. Just being more communal, talking to each other, being, you know, not enemies with, you know, your competing neighbor, you know, being friendly yeah. with your with your local detailer. Talk to that person, learn from them. Yeah, there's might, no might competition. Well. Yeah, like, maybe he can't handle can some only... details some days and you can pick up some extra ones. You never know. Or yep. maybe he's going to get out of business one day and maybe you can take his clientele list. Clientele list. So, you know, you never know. Just, you know, yep. stay open minded to it. And uh, I think sky's the limit for the detailing industry. I'm excited to see where, where it will keep going to. Well, I'm excited. All right, Greg. Thanks Appreciate for having us. Uh, do you want to plug anything? Anything you need, detailedimage.com. Go to our Ask a Professional Detailer blog. Hit us up on Instagram at Detailed Image Car Care or on Facebook at Detailed Image. There you go. And as always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more videos right here on the Rag Company YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.